Let me tell you about my day. I spent the afternoon in the inner west of Sydney kicking the footy and drinking wine with my mates in the park. I learnt about organic wine and ventured to the local pub in Marrickville, the Henson, to chat to their chef about building their menu and had an epic feed with good friend and Australian actor, Darren Gilshannon. My card declined, so Darren had to buy his own beer. I'm James Sweeney. This is Pub Lunch. Probably I'm going to start pissing in your pocket, but you're probably known at the moment as one of Australia's greatest clowns. Were you always that way inclined growing up, or when did you find out you were funny? Oh, look, I had an insatiable appetite to entertain my family around the kitchen table. I would pretend to excuse myself and walk out the kitchen and pop my head around the corner and climb up and down the door frame and... <laughs> <coughs> Still a classic, put my, go and put my skate, roller skates on and just kind of skate back and forward past the door frame, you know what I mean, doing different faces. And I don't know, it, I just it was always an idiot. I think at school I used it as a defence mechanism because I was at a school that was pretty... Um, sports orientated? Or? Very sports, very academic. Not much time for um, creative thinking people. I used to kind of um, survive through comedy. That was my thing. I yeah. used to kind of do, carry on like an idiot and, um, and get people laughing. It was my defense mechanism. It was a way to diffuse situations. It was a way to be that guy who wasn't a threat to people. When I was through drama school, one of the videos that I played and my class always played was a clip of you from a show called Elegant Gentleman's Guide to Knife Fighting. And it was the oh and clip. Yes. You um, on a porn set and you were the oh Yeah, the safety guy. officer on a porn set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very important job. Still to this day, one of the funniest Is clips. It, look, you'd be surprised how, how many ways you can injure yourself on a porn set. <laughs> and, you, and those people are very important. This day and age, particularly oh and is a big thing. But I remember when we first got that sketch, and the idea was this guy was having sex with this girl in this, in this sketch called Kitchen Sluts 5. And I was the uh, h and guy that kept jumping in and stopping it. But in the sketch, it actually had him properly having sex with her. And I said, there's something really unfunny about this sketch. It's kind of really grubby. Oh, no, no. So, so the guy was meant to be properly having sex with her. But then when I stepped in, I was demonstrating ways in which to hold your, your hips over your knees so you didn't hurt your lower spine when you're having sex. Uh, but it, in the script, I was actually meant to be having sex with her while I was doing it. And I said, that's just grubby. That's just wrong. Um, so I said, well, what if I'm simulating it and halfway through it, she just kind of escapes, like just slides out of the way and I'm left just brooding air. Like a, you know when chihuahuas try to, say, have sex with Labradors who are laying on their sides and they sneak up and they start doing this and the Labrador goes away and they just walk around doing this for a while? It's like the way dogs wank. Yeah, yeah, right. That's, that's what I thought you would make that, that funny. Yeah, I right. channeled a chihuahua wanking. <laughs> Why not? It makes sense. <laughs> I think you should get off the set. <sighs> My wife just recently left me. Get out. Yep, OK. Was it a very different feel shooting something in the US compared to here? Yeah, yeah. I think the American sensibility for comedy is they don't like silence. They don't like awkward. They kind of fill the silence with noise. And, uh, uh, and the, the self-deprecating nature of Australian and English comedy is a little lost on the Americans. It's, it's, it's niche when you do it over there, whereas over there, their comedy is a lot more out front. It's a lot more mm. verbose, a lot more obvious, you know. So, so I did notice that, that real sense of um, just noise. Yeah, yeah. It's busy. It's mm. coming at you fast over there, whereas here, we had lots of awkward, weird silences. Yeah. Where do you, uh, where do you think yeah. we tend to borrow that from? Is it more of the English sort of sense of humour? or? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think, well, I think we very much take after the Poms in that way. I think, uh, you know, our whole culture's kind of, we, the tall poppy syndrome, you know, we, we love to put each other down. We, kind yeah, of, we yeah. take great pride in taking the piss. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, that's the foundation of where our comedy springs. It's an amazing time where things have been called, where everyone's called to account. Yeah. But it's particularly interesting in, in the comic arena because comedy ch challenges taboo. And now we've got this really kind of dangerous kind of, uh, a territory that uh, you've got to be careful. Yeah, that's right. But it also makes for great comedy. Mm. Uh, I, I teach at comedy a lot as well, and I say to the young students, okay, you know, uh, if you're, if you're going to be offended by certain things that happen in this class, it just proves that you've got a point of view, and that's fine. Yeah, but, that's it. But um, we are in a comic arena, and we're doing jokes, so let's push the boundaries. Mm. We, can't be, we can't be bridled by that social kind mm. of behaviour. That's not our job as comedians. Our mm. job is to is to buck against that. And sometimes you make stronger points by deliberately being that for a bit. 
I got to chat to local legend and executive chef Megan McCulloch to discuss what it took to build such an iconic pub menu that kept those punters coming back year after year. For us, it was about having a very multicultural sort of menu that really was a part of what Marrickville was about at, at the time we came in. I mean, up the road you've got great Vietnamese sort of community and uh, we knew that people had embraced that multiculturalism. Right. So, but yeah, it just seems like you guys take a lot from the community, you give back to the community, and you're very socially responsible, that's and very right. sustainable, and you respect the land that we're actually on. Do you have a favourite dish? Um, right now, um, it would probably be the ramen. I think we do a um, pork belly uh, miso and sesame ramen, and we also do a vegan version. Why should you miss out on ramen if you're vegan? You know, yeah, so yeah, we. Exactly take that approach with a lot of our dishes. The chicken katsu, it's the closest we've come to putting a schnitzel on. Yeah. Like I wouldn't put a schnitzel on, but I would do something very close. It'd have to have that point of difference. Yeah. Knuckle sandwich is, I mean, that's, that's been on our opening menu. We called it a knuckle sandwich out of, you know, respect for Jeff Fennick yeah. and being a local. The KFC halloumi is something that, um, again, you know, like every chef loves KFC. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact. Tacos, but we do them with roti. Again, just a twist. And then we do old school Chinese fillings, uh, like satay chicken, beef and black bean, you know, it's just these old school flavours, but done really well. Yeah, you know, I've had to address the idea of I've spent I've spent 40 years hiding behind characters mm. and just doing this kind of stuff or getting up in public speaking as yourself I find difficult because mm. sometimes I'm not sure what version of myself I kind of am. That's right, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, and in my mind I switch on. But I think we're like that generally with people. Yeah. Like we are, we are different depending on who we come up against, yeah. you know. But I think the one thing I have learned over the years is that what we do is pretensies. It's All a game, it's a joke, it's a game. Yeah. It's pretensies, it's not real. So the idea of method acting, the idea of truly being, you know, Christian bailing shit, you know what I mean? And, and changing yourself to that degree where you set yourself crazy. Mm. I think I've just got a lot better at switching it on, switching it off. Yeah. That's your job. That's, because it's a job. Well, uh, yeah, I think, I think with anyone in any professional, I think we always have a, a tough time grasping of who we are, but I think as actors, we really embrace that. I'd go with that. Yeah. I'd go with that. Yeah. Um, today we are the guys who are sitting down enjoying a lovely pub lunch. Yeah, that's right. Talking about our craft. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. It's been a wonderful time. Thanks, Sweens. A full belly and several schooners later, Darren and I parted ways. I was on the way to the park to meet my friends, but I had to stop off at P&B Wine Merchants first to speak to local expert Ty. He taught me a lot of things about organic wine. What does make organic wine this colour and what difference does it make? The thing you'll see a lot of, um, especially kind of in natural wine spots, is um, things that are kind of getting a bit more into this sort of territory. Yeah. White wines made with skin contact or mm. verging on orange, orange wines. Yes. Uh, basically, if you, if you got a, a bunch of red grapes and squeezed the juice out, it'd be clear. Right. Um, but the longer you leave that clear juice with the skins, the it takes pigment out of there. It gives it gives it texture, phenolic texture, um, like tannins, and also heaps of colour as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, it's only it's only a pretty modern thing that white wines are super clear. Mm. It's kind of a little bit of a a, a leap back into making white wines um, a bit more traditionally. So I think one of the main selling points of an organic wine is it doesn't give you a hangover. Is that true? It depends how much you drink. Yes. Well, yeah, I reckon if you try hard enough, you can achieve anything. <laughs> yeah. And it can still happen. But, you know, there's like, there's less other stuff in there. I mean, chemically, what gives you a hangover? Is it preservatives or is it? Well, there's, there's, uh, there's a bunch of stuff they can put in a wine that they don't have to put on the label. Um, sure. One of which is arsenic. Really? Yeah. I guess you wouldn't want to put that on a label anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What do you got for us? Uh, this is the blind unicorn uh, pet nap. 
you familiar with what a pet net is? Explain to me. Pet net uh, is short for Petalant uh, Naturel, which is uh, French for basically naturally sparkling. Basically, you, you bottle it halfway through uh, fermentation, whack that little, little crown seal on top, mm. and then uh, there's a little bit of leftover sugar, so it starts eating that up and makes bubbles. Basically like naughty kombucha. Naughty kombucha, yeah, I yeah. like it. Manon, Adelaide Hills, that's, that's Pinot Gris and, and Pinot Noir together. But it isn't a rosé. Um, yeah. And, and rosés are basically uh, red wine made with less skin contact. Okay. Um, and this is, this is white and uh, red wine together, at last. Mm. Harmonious. Oh, that's so good. Mm. For us at, at PMV, wild ferment is probably one of, one of the biggest um, parts of criteria for, for getting a wine in. Okay. Um, so not using any chemical yeast. There's plenty of yeast just floating around right, on the anyway. grape skins and, sure. and everything. Yeah. Um, it is like a little bit unpredictable. Ferments can slow down and stop, um, which is why it's harder to make yeah. na natural wine like that. So it's really like handcrafted. You can't, yeah, you can't totally. use machines or anything for this. Or chemicals, really. Yeah. There are many great parks in the Inner West. Camperdown Memorial is one of them. And no great park is complete without wine, cheese, dogs, babies, and most of all, good friends. What have I learned from today? It's all about the community. This old bloke just started to talk to me while I was trying to film the intro. It looks like I'm engaged, but I actually have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> Except for that bit. <sighs> it was a good day.